Okay, the next thing I want to do is install my pump. I've got a, uh, a uh, 350 gallon per hour mag drive pond pump that I'm going to start out using this thing and see if that's anywhere near close to what I actually need. Uh, it'll be just a trial and error thing, but hopefully I've chosen the right one. Uh, and like I say, I'm going to I'm going to bore a hole through the side here and into barrel number two and run a crossover pipe and I'm going to mount my pump right on the pipe. Uh, if I had been thinking ahead and you guys, uh, if you decide to do this yourselves, you can you can do that, but it would have been a lot better if I'd have marked out and bored out my holes from the outside. Uh, but because I, I didn't do that now, I, I guess I'm alright though because I've got the luxury of having a long drill. Uh, a lot of you guys probably won't have that, so. But this way I can drill drill through from the inside and go right straight across to the other barrel and get a pilot hole. So, I'll be back. Okay, I got my holes bored. Got the first unit seal in. And <clears throat> because I'm going to push the pipe through both barrels in the same direction, I'm going to put one unit seal in from the inside and one unit seal in from the outside. And that should just let me pu push my pipe right straight through. Okay, there it is with the pipe installed. And my pump hanging right on my pipe. So the water will go down, down the fish tank, across the bottom, up through the filter mats. And the water level will be maintained just above the intake side of the pump. So the pump will be taking clean water off the top of the barrel all the time, shooting right straight back across into the fish tank. Still got plenty of room for a couple more filter mats under here and my biomedia laying right on top of those next two filter mats. Uh, this thing's pretty close to being done. I'm going to go ahead and drag it in the building now and uh, fill it up with water and get the water circulating in there and I think I'm going to, to uh, dump some ammonia in there for some fishless water cycling. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, there's my version of fish in a barrel filled with water, circulating water. So I'm going to go find me some, some ammonia now so we can get this water cycled. And uh, as soon as we get the water cycled, I'll have some fish in here. See you after a while. Alright, I found some ammonia. Uh, actually, I bought two, two jugs. One just to show you what not to get. Uh, here's one from Family Dollar. It says clear ammonia. But underneath of it, it says cleans and deodorizes. Hmm. And the ingredients say, if I can find them here, there we go, ingredients, I don't know if you can read that or not, but anyway the ingredients say ammonium hydroxide and chelating agent and surfactant. You don't want either the chelating agent or surfactant. And a good test is if you could pick it up off the shelf and you shake it, see how that's all foam? If that stuff foams, just put it back down. And here came from the local grocery store off their cleaning, cleaning aisle. Also says clear ammonia. And active ingredients here. The only thing in the active ingredients here is ammonium hydroxide. And see how clear that is? And if you shake it, it gets air bubbles in there, but there's no foam. So this is what I'm going to use. Uh, 
I'm just going to dump a capful or so at a time in there and, and uh, test the water after it gets all mixed up. And uh, we're going to be looking for somewhere between 4 and 5 ppm ammonia on our, on our chemical test. So, see you in a bit. Well, there's our first test. Uh, I dumped three capfuls of the ammonia in, stirred it up, let it circulate for five minutes or so, and uh, we came up with about 0.25, eh, maybe closer to 0.5 ppm. So uh, I'm going to dump three more capfuls in and see what happens. Okay, here's test number two. We've got six capfuls in this 100 gallons of water, and it looks like it's right at about 2 ppm. So by that gauge, six, six caps and we're at two, if we want to be at four, it should take about six more caps. Let's try it. Well, there we are. 12 capsules. There's a, that's an honest four, probably more like five or six ppm. So uh, we're going to let it we're going to let it ride right there for a while and uh, test it every day or two, a couple days and uh, see how all that works out. Uh, the only other thing I did here was I added some, uh, some of my poor man's biomedia to the barrel, about a five gallon bucket full. I'm just going to let that give that some surface area to grow the, grow the media on or grow the bacteria on. And then uh, I just set another 55 gallon barrel in there and filled it with clean water. And uh, what I'm going to do is, is uh, when I do a, 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 some water changes every now and then, I've got, a, I've got a mop sink right there and I've got an extra pond pump and I'm just going to pump, pump the dirty water into the mop sink and I'll have a 55 gallon of water sitting there that's uh, already degassed and uh, brought up the temperature to put right back into them. So, and then when I put that water in there, I'll just refill the barrel for the next time around. So, that's all you get for today. Uh, hopefully next time around I'll, I'll have, uh, have the other two filter pads to go down into there and uh, an air pump and an air stone for in there and then uh, I think it's pretty much pretty much ready to go for fish except for waiting for the water to cycle and that could be a three or four week affair and, uh, we'll just have to sit back and test the water each weekend I'll give you a little short update on how the water's doing and then once once the water cycles we'll plop the fish in there. So, see you later.